How's it going everyone? Andrew Robinson here, back at it with another Max MSP tutorial. In this video, we are going to look at how to build a loop station where you can stack multiple loops on top of each other. Super cool technique. I use this in my DJ instrument video uh, somewhere here on my channel. And just it's a very simple technique to actually do. So let's just jump right into it, shall we? First things first, we're going to need to set up a record and buffer object. Now, record, as it says here in the drop down window, record sound into a buffer, which is super cool. And the buffer is just stores audio sample. So it makes sense. The way this works is they have to have the same name. Once you give a name to the record and to the buffer, it's going to link these two together. So we're going to say uh, that our name is loop. And we're just going to type that into both of these. And now any sound I send to the record object will get recorded into this buffer object. Um, so it's super cool that it just works based on that naming function rather than having to patch things together. It allows us to like share the audio in a lot of different ways very easily and very clean. So now that we've got those two things linked together, the last thing we need to do real fast is give the buffer a duration, which is in milliseconds. And this is going to be the maximum size of the loop we want. We're going to say 30,000. Um, which gives us 30 seconds of audio at max to loop. Uh, that seems like a pretty good middle ground value to me. And with that set up, we are now going to create the easy DAC, which is going to be our audio input. We're going to patch that into our record object. And then real fast, I highly recommend also using an external microphone. Do not use your built in microphone. You can, but because it's probably really close to the speakers on your computer. Uh, it's going to record the output coming back in and it's going to double everything and sound really weird. If you use an external microphone, you don't really have that issue as much. Um, once you plug in your external microphone, all you got to do is go to options, click audio status. And in this drop down window, you see input device. You would just select your microphone that you're using. This is the one I'm using. Once you do that, you got to click the audio driver back on. And once it's all blue and lit up and ready to go, we are basically set. We just need a toggle, which I'm going to press T on the keyboard, create a toggle, patch that into the record object. And now once I click that, it will start the recording. And anything I say into the microphone after that point is going to be recorded in the buffer. So I'm going to click that and we're going to test it. It's recording literally right now as I am talking. And once I press this toggle to stop, we're going to see in the buffer, which we can double click on that. There you go. Here's all 30 seconds of uh, buffer space, and this is all the audio that I recorded within that time. So perfect. It's there, and we could actually play this back. That's the other half of this. We need to play back the sound from the buffer in some way. I'm going to use the groove object because we can do a lot of fun things with groove to get really crazy sounds um, rather than just straight up playback. It It's just a fun object to use. So um, it works off the same convention. Uh, we just have to create the groove tilde object and give it a name, which is the same name that we want um, from our buffer, which in this case is loop. So now all these objects are linked together. We're going to record audio into here. It's going to get stored in here. And this groove is going to look at whatever's stored in here and play it back through its audio output. It just needs to be linked to our audio output, which is the easy deck. Uh, it's the opposite of this one. This is our microphone. And this is our speaker. So pretty easy. And um, I'm just going to do this. It's going to create a double mono signal, which you might not want. But I think for just this uh, example, it's OK. It's not that big of a deal. Um, and Groove works based on audio signals as well. It needs an audio signal to do its playback. And we can turn any value into an audio signal using the sig tilde object. You see it says converts numbers into audio signals. So we're going to click that patch that into our groove and then we are going to create a float number box which I press F on the keyboard to do and patch that into the sig and then if we give it a value of one it's going to turn that into an audio signal which will tell the groove object to play back at normal speed. Click that and we're going to test it. It's recording literally right now as See, that works. That was the audio we recorded earlier. I sent it a zero now to turn it off. And as I was saying, you can do a lot of fun things with Groove to get crazy playback. If you do 0.5, you're going to play it at half speed. If you do it at, if you send it a two, it's going to play it twice as fast. 
Uh, it played so fast that it ended right away. Uh, we're going to send it a negative one. And that would play it in reverse, but we actually need to reset the loop, which we can do by saying at loop one in the groove object. So that's going to turn on looping mode that's for so the awesome. groove object. And there we go. It's now looping. Now, what's happening, the reason why we're not really hearing audio all the time anymore is because that buffer is still 30 seconds long. So there's like about, you know, 27 seconds of silence in our playback that is um, being accounted for. So what we need to do is we need to use the crop message on the buffer to then crop it to the size of the loop that we want. Once it's cropped to that loop size, it's going to loop exactly how you would expect it to. This is not that hard to figure out, but we do need another object. We need the object clocker, which is going to report time elapsed at regular intervals. And if you send it a start or stop message or a bang, um, it's going to start outputting time. We're gonna patch this into our message box, which will allow us to see the time coming out. And it's also going to act as a buffer. So that way, um, we're, we're going to set the crop to exactly the time that it will be at the end of the loop this way. This will make much more sense in just a second when I show up. But first things, let's send it that bang. And you see it's counting time in milliseconds. So that's perfect. Um, now we need the crop message for our buffer and it takes two values. It's going to take a start time to crop to, which we want to be zero since that will be the start of our loop. And then we're gonna say dollar sign one to be the variable, which will be the end time, which will be this value. We just need to send this message box a bang now so that this value gets output into this message when we stop the loop. And we can do that easily because we are using this trigger to start and stop our loop as it is. So we can use the cell message and say zero one, and we can send out a bang to the clocker when it starts, and then a bang to the message box when it stops. So if we just patch the toggle into the cell object now, when it's one, which is when we're start starting, we're gonna get a bang out of this outlet, which we will use to start our clocker. And when we turn it off and it stops, we're gonna get a bang out of this outlet because it matches the zero, which we're going to use to send to this message box, which will pass its value out this patch cord in to the crop message, which will then crop our buffer to be that size. Um, and this should work, but as just some extra precaution, we're going to use some messages to uh, make sure our buffer is uh, ready to go every single time. So we're gonna use another message. We're gonna say clear to clear its contents of whatever was previously recorded. And then we're going to use the set size message, which sets the size of the buffer uh, to reset it back to the maximum loop. This will give us, this will give us the uh, ability to record loops of any size again. Um, which will be pretty nice. And this just needs to make sure that we do this before we start the clocker. So we're gonna use a trigger BB object, which will send out bangs sequentially. And we're gonna patch the left outlet one into the clocker and the right outlet one into the message so that this happens first before this. Then we're gonna patch that one cell right back into it so it's ready to go. And that is set up and we should just be good to start recording another loop that will uh, be cropped to the exact right size. So I'm just gonna press the trigger again and hopefully this works. Um, and if we change this to a one, we'll just hear that audio being looped. And, and hopefully this working, and hopefully this working, and hopefully this working, and hopefully this working. So yeah, that does work. And um, we can double click the buffer again and see, yep, that did cut it right where the audio was clicked on and off. So perfect. Now to make this loop stack and play back, that's the big secret. And the trick to doing that is actually to create a second buffer. 
So we have our initial buffer loop, which is going to be the uh, recording, but we need a separate one to do the playback. And what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate the loop over to the playback one. And then this buffer will be cleared and ready for another loop, which will then be duplicated and played back and stacked on top. It's going to make a lot of sense uh, in just a sec. Let's just create the buffer first. We're going to call this buffer um, play. And then we're going to change the name of the groove object from loop to play so that it's linked to our new buffer. Cool. So we've got this set up to crop to the um, to crop to the sound when it turns off. And after it does that, right after it crops it, we need to duplicate it into this play buffer, which we can do using the message duplicate. You see it says import the contents. It, get, it gets cut off, but it says import the contents of another buffer. So we just say duplicate, and then we need to give it the name of the buffer we want to duplicate. So in that instance, this is loop. And we'll do that, we'll patch that message into this buffer so that the play buffer will have the duplicated contents of our loop buffer. And we want this to happen after we crop our audio, which is when it's turned off. So same thing, we're going to create another TBB. We're gonna patch that into there. We're gonna send the first bang out to this message because we want it to crop first. And then we're gonna send the second bang to the duplicate loop message, which will then duplicate it immediately after um, cropping it. So let's see how well that worked. Check one, two. And if we double click this, we should see that, yep, the play buffer has the same audio signal that is in the loop one. And if we do check this. Check one, two. Check one, two. Check one, two. Then um, just like that, it is playing this buffer now. Um, so to get this to stack in loop, we just have to do one more small thing. We have to patch the groove outlet back into the uh, <clears throat> record object. And it will just have to play back the audio as we are uh, looping things. So that makes sense. Um, we're gonna we're gonna test this now and it should work. I'm gonna hit toggle to record and I'm gonna record something, any kind of audio. It could be a long audio loop like this. And once we turn this back and I'm on, gonna record something, any kind of audio, it could be a long audio loop like this, and I'm gonna record something, any kind of audio. And now while that's playing, I'm going to record a loop on top of it, and it's gonna be something. A loop on top of it, and it's gonna be something. A loop on top of it, and it's gonna be something. A loop on top of it, and it's gonna be something. A loop on top of it, and it's gonna be something. A loop on top of it, and it's gonna be something. A loop on top of it, and it's gonna be something. A loop on top of it, and it's gonna be something. A loop on top of it, and it's gonna be something. A loop on top of it, and it's gonna be something. It's Cool, beautiful, it works just like that. One little final detail I'm gonna throw into this just to make it as clean as we can and also still just keep it kind of simple is we're going to use the normalize message which will normalize the audio. Um, and we're gonna patch that into both buffers. So uh, it just make sure to, it will make sure that it gets both basically. And we're gonna create another B in this trigger um, so we're going to crop it, then normalize it, then duplicate it. Um, and yeah, that'll just help it from keeping the audio overloading as you start to stack samples up on top of each other. But I hope that makes sense. I hope this was a pretty cool uh, concept and you find it very valuable. If you did learn something, please remember to like and subscribe because that's how I know that you learned something from this video. Um, if there's any questions and confusions or anything, please ask that in the comment down below and I will answer it when I can. 
Um, thank you so much for watching as always. I really appreciate it so much. Um, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks again.